What's up, fat fan? So I am back, and um, I'm just here to talk about some stuff that has happened in the sport of boxing, and I didn't have time to post it. I was going through some personal stuff of my own, too, so I've been inactive. Um, lay it all out. The first disappointment of mine is the fact that Emmanuel Navarrete is not a four-division world champion. But the good news is since it was a split decision loss, he should be given a rematch, or he has the right to a rematch, and it shows that he's not too small for the 135-pound division. But, you know, on the other hand, I would like to go congratulate Dennis Byron Chick. And, you know, I think the, the plan here is for Shakur and Loma to finally fight at 135 um, and make it a unified title match, and that's just my personal opinion of what should happen. Um, I believe that Shuk that um, what's his name? The guy that fuck. Okay, I believe that Baron Chick, you know, was a sparring partner of Lomachenko before, so they're gonna give him to Shakur or Shakur or to Loma first before the big undisputed fight happens. You know, Lomachenko is now the IBF lightweight champion. Shakur is a WBC, and Loma is a W. IBF. Well, we have Tank Davis at 135, who is defending his title this coming June 15th in the MGM Grand Garden of Las Vegas, Nevada. A couple of things I want to touch. Um, that's just my my opinion of the politics of what has happened, but it was a good fight. And, you know, it was just, it just looks like never is just slowing down as he's going up in weight, which is normal. But he had enough power and he did hurt Baron Chicka a couple of times. It's just painful to my eyes to watch even half of that fight happen because <laughs> never really lost. But kudos to him for having this sportsmanship of of clapping when they announced Baron Chick's name. He didn't go on the microphone. If I remember correctly, he didn't go on the microphone today that he that that um he was robbed he just gave off the vibe that he he lost a very close decision and you know i think i'd like to see what he can do at 135 with the other names but the way i see it happening is we're gonna see a you we're gonna see ship or fight you know but the problem is they're different from different promotional companies but Something needs to happen so that we have an undisputed champion at the lightweight division yet again. Now, before that, actually, several shockers. Now, we're on the loss of Navarrete. And now we're in a way getting dropped against Luis Neri. Everyone expected, even I myself, expected it to be a fly swat match where you know, no one would just destroy Luis Neri. But the knockdown in the first round showed that. That you know showed that in a way it's, it's just another fighter, and Luis Neri had what it took to beat beat in a way. It's just that he couldn't. He, in a way, after that knockdown, in a way, knew more or less on what to do. While Luis Neri had the body language of wow, I'm a lucky motherfucker for dropping him. There was no game plan to try and get him out of there in the coming rounds, which he could have done. You know, but then again, I wasn't in there, and Luis Neri was in there, so Luis Neri knew what to, to do best. You know, I had, I talked about how in no way should go up to 130, 130 if I asked for Valdez straight away, but I think after getting defeated, you know, not getting defeated, but getting dropped by Luis Neri, just shows that in no way it's, it's a little too, it's a little smart for that. But in no way did mention that he wants to go until super featherweight. And I believe he's gonna go. He's gonna go and do it. Um, eventually, but let's just hope that we'll see the fights. I really want to see for Illinois is Oscar Valdez and uh, what's the other fucking lightweight? But Oscar Valdez, I want to see that fight happening. I think it's gonna be a good fight. Oscar Valdez versus Inouye at one hundred and thirty pounds. And um, who else? Oh yeah, Oshaki Foster. I want to see that fight happen. 
in a way that was Jackie Foster. So a good friend of mine from the WBO in Australia told me that you know, it wouldn't beat Oshaki Foster. So I just want to see that fight happen eventually. And personally, I believe that Inoue can do what he did to Fulton to Oshaki Foster. As for Valdez Inoue fight, it's going to be another barn burner. It's very similar to, very, very similar to, uh, how do you say this? gonna be a barn burner very simple similar to um when in fought the air the first time around but it's gonna be like a mexican versus mexican war except that in is not mexican in is japanese and i think they should give it you know they gave ricky had the mexican british nickname hey i think in a is a mexican japanese you know he's he's you know despite the getting knocked down by louis there he basically just destroyed the living hell out of Luis Neri for the next six rounds. So, you know, in a way, it's still a force to be reckoned with. And, you know, people people tell me one day he's going to lose by stoppage. Yeah, I don't doubt it could happen, but I think he has good recuperative skills, and he proved it after getting dropped. He treated not down as a lesson, and, you know, he was a smart fighter for not standing up right away that knocked down. Now, if Navarrete decides to go back to 130, I think that we're going to see a, a, new, a fight between him and Oscar Valdez or a rematch. And, um, you know, if the weight cut to 130 is affecting Navarrete in a bad way, then I guess... I guess Valdez will have the advantage in that fight. But then again, in a way, it talks about being undisputed at 130. I think he can do it. But honestly, there are a lot of people at 126 that he should fight, apparently, but they're all big years for him. Especially, you know, we get dropped by Luis Neri. I am glad that the fight between Inno and Rubisi Ramirez never happened because they're talking about having that fight happen straight away. But then Robesi lost to a tall Mexican dude. And I think that that tall Mexican dude, Inoue will 100% have struggles against that fight. Guy, it will be a fight that Inoue is going to have to dig deeper to win. That's why I think he's better off at 130 because the fighters there are similar to his fight. Yeah. As for Navarrete, I hope to see him back in action soon. And, you know, good job for not being emotional about the loss. You just treated the loss as a learning experience, which I believe every fighter should do when they lose. They should just treat it as a learning experience. That's all for now, folks, and uh, it's great to be talking to you guys again. Goodbye for now.